is your moment. It's your time to shine. Amen? That's a real powerful mother's heart for each of her children. And thank you for the comments coming in. Some of you are saying that your mom is a friend, a provider. She's kind. She's a joker. She's funny. Very good. Protector. Unconditional love and sacrificial. She absorbs pain and disappointments in life. Wow. She's inspirational. Deeply insightful and thoughtful. Thank you. Looking out for the best interest of others. Wow. Forgiving and fun. Thank you. Wow, that's amazing. Moms, wow, you've preached my message now. I can just sit down. <laughs> yeah, moms are all those things. Thank you. Keep them coming. You might remember more. So what is so amazing about mothers? I'm just going to, in a short while, I'm just going to try and go through this. And there will be things that I miss. Please keep them coming. Let's make it interactive. We're here to work together. Amen? We're family. And that song about us just being able to win and shine. Mothers tend to want their children to do well. And um, I'm going to shout out to the single mom. Some of the message I'm doing is um, I'm sharing. Sometimes we lead, you know, the children with a husband, and that's really wonderful. I'm so grateful for my husband um, being there. But some of the moms, mother and father on their own. Wow. I do shout out to the single moms. My heart go out to the single moms who have done this work single-handedly. Wow. God bless you. None of your kindness or sacrifices go in vain. Another person said, mothers are loving. Yes, absolutely. So, thank you. The scripture in Proverbs 31, which is the main text I'm using, and then the others around it um, are really powerful. Proverbs 31 says, this woman, who can find, and I've um, taken the liberty of putting mothers instead of a wife, that a mother is a woman of strength and valor. She is full of wealth and wisdom. Even in the night season, she rises and sets food, food on the table for hungry ones in her house and for others. She sets her heart upon a field and takes it as her own. She labors there to plant living vines. She works hard. She wraps herself with strength, might, and power in all her works, and she tastes and experiences a better substance. And her shining light will not be extinguished, no matter how dark the night. She stretches out her hands to help the needy, and she lays hold of the world of government. She is known but her extravagant generosity to the poor. For she always reaches out her hands to those in need. And she's not afraid of tribulation. Amen? And the word tells us that everything comes from God. Within this nurturing God, within this providing God, Patria, his father, his family, everything origin originates and finds its purpose in him. So, the first thing that I'm going to say is amazing about mothers is that mothers are resourceful nurturers, okay? Here comes the R's. Resourceful nurturers. They care. They look after. Many of you said it. They offer unconditional love. They sacrifice. They absorb pain. They're inspirational. They look out for the needs of others. Amen? They spend so much time giving out. Sometimes they forget to look after themselves. They're so caring. And there's a lot we're sharing now about self-care. Moms, we want to encourage you to look after yourselves as well. But thank you for all the sacrifices. They don't go in vain. They're full of wisdom. They feed uh, in terms of just natural food. And also, they give wisdom and advice when we're ready to listen. They don't want you to go hungry. One of my deepest pain for me is like, I want to feed my children. I want my children looking after them. I know mothers, that's one of our hearts, is to look after them, spirit, soul, body, and to make them grow up. Our ceiling is their floor. Amen? We want our ceiling to be their floor, that they go further than us. Secondly, mothers are resilient providers. And I've said that quite often we do this with the fathers. It's great. And sometimes these women have sacrificed and done mothering and fathering on their own. And there's so much sacrifices have gone, um, you know, for children 
God sees. And I do believe he will reward you. Shout out to the single moms again. Even in the night season, she rises and sets food on the table for the hungry ones in her house. And for others, the needs of the community, the homeless, the vulnerable. Shout out to all the moms. Amen. Well done. Then we're going to look at, just for a moment, a few biblical examples. And in some of the readings that we had there, the first one we're going to look at is Eve, who was the mother of all living. And as Shelley read earlier, she didn't have anyone to look up to apart from her husband and God together in the garden. There were no other women. She was the original prototype, the first woman mother of all humanity. And she set the tone for loving and looking after. She had her own children in the garden, and we know that things were not perfect. But again, she looked after. There's no record of the children going without. One of the children misbehaved really badly, but there's no record of her not looking after the children. And she's the mother of all of us, and she was the beginning, according to Christianity, of everything. We thank God for her. Then we had Sarah, Abraham's wife, the other um, example that I've chosen. There are quite a few. I've chosen just a few because we don't have time to go through all of them. And she was, in the end, called the mother of many nations. She was childless for such a long time. If you are someone who's got a heart for children and you want to have kids, it's really difficult if you can't. And the Bible tells us that up to her, like, 90 years old, she didn't have any kids. And there was a miraculous birth of Isaac. In fact, when they talked about it, the angel said to her, first of all, she laughed. Because she knew that by now, she, it wasn't physically possible. <laughs> like, what on earth? You know, but God put a miraculous child in her. Isaac, that son of laughter. Praise God. And here, I just wanted to share as well that some, some of us, sometimes you want kids and you can't for whatever reason. It's not the easiest thing. And I know that I've, I've had three children, wonderful children, thank the Lord, praise God. Um, just want to share my testimony now. Um, thank you, Father. But, however, I've had two miscarriages. Um, and... If you're going through pain now, I feel you a bit. We can't all understand exactly what everyone's been through. I can only share with you my pain myself. I had lost Benjamin before Josh was born. And Josh is the firstborn now. The first, your older brother, Josh, Benjamin. And I remember lying in hospital after the baby was born thinking, Lord, why? Quite often we say, well, don't ask why. But you know what? When you go through something that difficult, you do ask why. I'm a Christian. I love God. I'm trusting God. This was our first child. And God, why? Then again, we're trusting God. And after having the two children, then I lost another one before Rachel was born. Um, and that time it was so early on that we couldn't tell whether it was a boy or a girl. But still, I felt like, God, why? is happening. And I remember God directed me to Job and I was weeping. I thought, what kind of a father would allow me to go through so much pain? Sometimes there are no satisfactory answers to some of the things we go through. So if you're in that place, especially I'm talking to the ones who've lost their moms and you find it difficult. Some people lose their moms when they're quite young and then they've got to go on and be a mother themselves without the support of a mom. That's really difficult. Shout out to you. Our hearts go out to you. God loves you. It may not all make sense now. We pray for, you know, brighter days ahead in the name of Jesus. Then the next mother I've chosen to look for as a biblical example, the final one is Mary, the mother of Jesus. And she was honored for her devotion and obedience. She said, be it unto me according to your word. As a young girl, God had a divine purpose and came to her through the angel one day and spoke to her. Although she didn't understand how these things will happen, she just said, be unto me, according to your word. And I've always, from a teenage year, I looked at Mary as an example. She exemplifies again 
that kind of life of devotion and worship towards God. And we thank God for her. Then I just want to spend some time to look at some modern day examples. And the first one that I'm going to go to is uh, Mother Teresa from India. And she didn't have her own natural children. She was a headmistress for a short time of a school. Uh, and then she, she, she was there for nearly 20 years, like me, actually. I was a teacher for about 20 years. I was quite touched by this. And then she enjoyed teaching. But when she saw the suffering around her and children that were not her natural children, but she saw the suffering, she wanted to do something to help. And they were known as missionaries of charity. Her and her mission were to care for the hungry, the naked, the homeless, the crippled, and the blind, and lepers. And it's like the COVID, lepers, if you try and touch them, you know, it's, it's contagious. She wanted to care for those that were going through real difficulty. I thought, shout out to Joyce for the homeless project in LNC, well done. And other homeless projects going around, this, you know, this area, shout out to the South. Well done for looking after the homeless. You're doing God's work. She wanted to care for those that were unwanted, unloved throughout society who were a burden to society at the time, and the orphanages that she opened, and so on. Okay? So we honor, we honor God on her behalf for what she achieved. And we know she won all the Nobel Prizes, the Nobel Prizes, and so on. But her heart was just to serve and to be a mother to these who didn't have their own mothers, and so on. And then I wanted to look at for a time about our own, my mum, and shout out to my husband um, as well, that he lost his mum about five years ago now. Um, again, we just honour God for my own natural mother and Pastor Alex's mum as well, because she was a real friend and we used to pray together and I do miss her. And, you know, I said my mum, you can see my mum in the picture with me and Rachel there, uh, my mom was um, here, they left us at home, but what I learned from her, especially when I realized her love languages was gifts, she was always giving gifts, and because that wasn't my love language, I didn't realize till later on, she was always sending gifts and buying things for us, even when we were in Nigeria, she'd send money, they'd buy clothes, because I was young, I just wanted to be with her, I didn't realize how much, because later on in life, I thought, oh, she sends gifts. That means she loves us and she cares about us until I met her. So thank you. Shout out to mom as well. I love you. And I learned from her this sort of um, sacrificing, hardworking, never giving up, pioneering. You know, like we will never surrender, <laughs> the uh, Churchill quote. That's my parents. My mom would just work and work and make sure that we were looked after. And then Pastor Alex's mom as well. She was there looking after us, praying with us. You know, she was so good at decorating and, you know, the gardening. I miss her now because sometimes I look at my garden and I think, oh, she was so good decorating. She was immaculate at, you know, looking after the home. And, and also, my gosh, you know, tried to declutter. She was good at decluttering. If she sees my wardrobe, sometimes she might think, oh, Dorcas, what's happened? <laughs> she was just, she was ruthless. And I, I do thank God for her. I thank God for her tenacity, her heart for people. And Ellen Sears from the South will remember her as a mother in the house in terms of the church and all the prayers. You know, she worked for the BBC and she would cut out things from the news and would pray into strategic things in our nation. Wow. And then she was very good at going for walks and fit. Oh, those 10 mile walks. We need to do some of those again. I'll honor her for that. Yeah, so there's so many different things that we can learn from mums. We've named a few already. We want to encourage us and pray and pray blessing over each one going through stuff. And we're going to hopefully look at a bit more as we pray later on. So the fifth thing is, how should we be today? How should we be? And I just want to spend some time and appreciate some of the moms in and around LNC. I won't name all of them. These are examples of the ones that I have noticed and in the short time we can go through. So if your name is not there, if you think of anybody, please put their names in the comments of the women and the mothers that you honor and the women and the mothers that you um, think you know, have 
you've had an input in your life and lives around you. Some of them don't have children themselves, but they do mother nevertheless. And we thank you. We're so grateful. So shout out to Pastor Edna and you know, shout out to Tony Cassidy. Others have been mothers of mothers around the nations globally. They're looking out for the mothers who mother others. Thank you. Well done. Keep going. You're doing a great job. And then Auntie Myrtle. Some people call her Sister Myrtle. I want to say thank you for bringing up all your children. And I'm, I've met some of the grandchildren as well. You're amazing. And when we came, thank you for being so loving to us and blessing me and Pastor Alex till date. Uh, Jane Signanen, yeah, you've got your children and grandchildren. Say well done. Jane Springer, my sister Jane and Auntie Joyce, who are hopefully watching at the moment. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Um, Shelley, wow. Shelley mothers her children and her and Peter, the whole <laughs> of LNC at some point. Thank you so much for your sacrifices over the years. God sees. Auntie Helen, if you're watching, I know you can't always meet with us, you know, because you've been sick for a while. Auntie Helen, shout out to you and how you've mothered and loved. Bev, wow. You're amazing. Bev was one of the original ones when we arrived, Bev. <laughs> your, your tenacity, your resilience and ongoing, you're amazing. Thank you. Julie. Yeah, Julie, I just love the way that you're so generous to your family and you look, look after so much. Again, Julie, well done. We appreciate you. We appreciate the way you look after and bless other you know, people around you as a mother figure. Cara. Shelly mentioned you earlier. Well done, Cara. Your um, chip off the old block, I would say. You lovingly care for your children and you gather family around you. We really honor you as that Proverbs 31 woman. Sandra G, Sandra W, well done. Keep up the good work. Um, you're just so amazing in the way that you sacrifice and give and you continue to love and look after your family and families around you. Um, God sees Jeanette, Ali, Nadine, you know, God knows you. So, Sonia, if you're watching, Sonia, you're, we're not, we don't always see you now, but God knows that you've loved and looked after so many in the community. You, I know you've got grandchildren as well, but you also love outside of yourself, and we thank God for that. Um, Pauline, if you're watching, God bless you. We love you. You're amazing. Auntie Olivia, when we were preparing as well, Auntie Olivia, I honor you as though you don't have your own natural children. You've loved and looked after others. And God sees. And you're a spiritual mom in this LNC family. And we thank God for you. Yeah, God bless you. So we talked about women that are resilient nurturers. Resourceful nurturers, sorry, and resilient providers who always look after and provide for their family and people around. Then I wanted to land on this whole thing around and prayer for the Queen and Meghan Markle at the moment, two mothers. Summer last year, I wrote to Meghan Markle, I think it was summer last year, congratulating her on the birth of her uh, son, and I know she's pregnant again. There's been a lot of, um, you know, trouble around what's going on in the royal family. We weren't there. We don't know. But our hearts go out to Meghan Markle in terms of her feeling traumatized. But I also honor the Queen in the way that through all the troubles and different things she's been through, she stood and her love for God and love for Jesus. I will always thank God for the way that she honors the Lord. And also as a grandmother, she's a mom and grandma. We thank God for her. We pray, you know, just want to pray in a minute um, for, you know, God to just look after them. Um, before I get ahead of myself, there's, um, when I was preparing, there's a poem, which I hope, I'm going to read parts of it. Uh, the poem I wrote to read out uh, when Pastor Alex's mom passed away, and when I was preparing, I felt that I should read portions of it. I might need glasses. Thank you. Darling. I might need glasses to... Um, <laughs> my eyes are so amazing. <laughs> In my 50s, it's like, what's happened? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for the moms. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, and for the fathers. Woo. Yeah, that's better. So, it's just part of this. What I wrote, I, I put the true measure of a mother... At, um, 
when Pastor Alex's mom passed away, when I read this, and I'm just, I felt God said to read some of it here today. So, I noticed as a mother, she could juggle many things at once. She was a multitasker. She was a shoulder to cry on when we were hurting. She was sometimes a teacher offering support. with assignments and dissertations. She did not hesitate to support us as we prepared for marriage. And she expressed more loving care by decorating our first property, hallelujah, the garden and planting beautiful flowers. Yeah, she looked after the garden as well. She also offered advice when our children, Joshua, Faith and Rachel were born, ever ready to lend a helping hand read books, and tell stories. She had a wealth of knowledge to draw on. She did not discriminate in terms of race, culture, age, or gender. She was aware the variety is the true spice of life. She embraced difference and diversity with open arms. She understood the truth, honesty, and good character will, co- will outlive lies. She unconsciously lived with Ubuntu, I believe, the community. She enjoyed connecting with others, including friends, family, and colleagues. If she made a mistake, she was not too proud to apologize, say sorry, and make amends. For Gwen, it seems that for a brief moment, we had the privilege of her company. Our lives are richer for knowing her, and more empty now that she's gone. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We will miss her contagious smile, her acts of kindness, her continued encouragement, Christmas dinners, Easter brunches, and Sunday roasts, her inspirational talks, quizzes, and intercessory prayers. She was a true mother, and we will forever cherish her in our hearts. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, let's pray. Thank you, Father. We pray for those who don't have their moms now. Last year, we remember you. We remember Sandra G as well, Sandra W. Thank you, Jesus. God knows. Bev, we pray for God's strength. Julie and Tony, we pray God's strength and guidance. Aaliyah, if you're watching, we pray for you that God will really comfort you today and just let his peace surround you. We thank God for the mums who are alive and with us. We pray strength and health. Shalom over them. Shalom over the families. Shalom over the uh, nuclear family, extended family, and the society and community around families and mums that gather today to celebrate. Whether on Zoom, whether through technology, just on the phone, because we can't all get together at the moment. We honor each and every one of you. and We thank God for the sacrifices you've made, the loving hearts, the giving, the goodness and the care and nurture you've shown to so many. Thank you. We say happy Mother's Day today. We thank God for you. Grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. In Jesus' name, this is our moment. This is our time to shine. For the mothers, we say go for it. You can do this. The best is yet to be. Keep going. Just fire up and keep going and looking after. You know, that many will see that the ending of the Proverbs scripture, it says, your children will rise up and call you blessed. And we just, you know, thank God for you. Shout out to the single moms again. Shout shout out to the moms also who look after their husbands. God bless you. Because husbands as well are, you know, an extra child sometimes to look after. (laughs) Not just saying. (laughs) Shout out to those mums as well. (laughs) 
we love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. <laughs>